Thank you. But if you had invited me, if they had invited me to come here 16 years ago, I would have loved to have come here, but for a completely different reason. I was a Baptist uh, evangelical evangelist, kind of like Tim Staples. You know, he's telling how he's out there all fired up for the Lord. I was too, and I used to even go out on the street and preach. And we used to have Bible studies and do evangelism and all of these things. And tar Catholics were, the, were my favorite target because they were so easy. They didn't know their Bibles, and you could just pick them off the tree like a right peach. I think that's changing though in America. A lot of Catholics are just not like that anymore. But I would I would always target the Catholics and ask them certain questions that I knew they couldn't answer and the next thing you know I could pick them like a right peach. And the funny thing is is my daughter now is 19 and she babysits so she's like a nanny for this family and this guy just left the Catholic Church to become a Protestant and he goes to Northridge Church, which is one of those big mega churches that has theater style seating and you buy your cappuccino on the way in and you put it in your cappuccino cup holder in, his, in the church. And he started talking to my daughter about getting saved. And my daughter, you know, she, she it was kind of surprising to her because she always hears me say that people do this, but she's never had it happen to her. And so here he was starting to tell her how she needed to get saved. And if she's a Catholic, she's trying to get to heaven by her works. And there's no such thing as purgatory. And she starts texting me, Dad, what should I say? What should I say? Thank you. I want to read a few of their stories so that you understand what these brothers and sisters of ours went through. Things that we've never seen with our own eyes. Things we've never experienced, but if you were back in those days, you would. Am I going to be too gory and gross and graphic? I'm going to be a bit, I think. I hope so. Because if I'm not, I'm not doing them justice. If I sugarcoat it and cover it for Americans, I'm not doing them justice. I want you to understand a little bit of what they actually suffered for us. We're sheltered again. You know, the only time we see blood and gut and, and gore is at the movies, in our entertainment. And I think, boy, is there a parallel here because where did the Romans go to see the blood and the guts and the gore? Also in their entertainment to the, to the arenas and to the theaters of the day where they would see blood and guts and gore, but they were removed from it. They were up in the stands. It wasn't touching them. They just watched it. And Americans, we don't want anything to touch us. We want to be safe. We want to be comfortable. And where, does, where do our kids go to see blood and guts and gore to the movies, to the entertainment of the 20th century paganism. So, if you lived back then, what about a crucifixion? We saw Mel Gibson's movie about a crucifixion. You said, oh, it's terrible. I, can't even. I know people that close their eyes through the whole whipping scene and most of the crucifixion scene. They couldn't stand it. But do you know that if you lived back then, you would see this every day? This was nothing new. Life was cheap. Rome would easily persecute someone and whip them to shreds and hang them on a cross as an example to make sure you would never rebel against Rome. They did it to scare you. Every day you'd walk out of the gates of Jerusalem with your children to go visit Aunt Martha. Guess what you would see? You would see men hanging on crosses outside the Damascus gate where Jesus was. It was something you saw every day. And when Jesus said, back in those days, take up your cross and follow me, you knew exactly what he meant. Today, our cross is as if the priest goes too long in his homily. Oh, how we suffer. <laughs> I got a cold this week. I can't, I, oh, how I suffer. I'm carrying my cross. Carrying your cross. When Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, he may have been saying that while slaves were going down the street carrying their crosses. You may have been able to hear echoing in the distance the screams of men on crosses while Jesus is telling you, if you don't take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of me. I had a chance to talk to a bunch of seminarians and I said, you guys, this is a dangerous career you're getting into, young guys, which means in 50 years you're going to be priests. You have no idea what our country and the world could be like in 50 years. You're going to go around with a bullseye on your chest. Are you sure you really want to be priests? And they all said, yes. The world's going to need men like us in 50 years. We have to raise our kids 
to be countercultural. We have to have them understand we need to proclaim to the world who these people were. Protestants need to know who these people were, not only what they did, but what they taught. We need to know them. We need to love them. We need to honor them.